Hello, good night. This is Brother John coming to you tonight. And I'm here just to, you know, I know you see the title of the message. Do you see it? Do you see it? And that's just something I was just meditating on tonight. And as I, as I'm, as my, as me walking with Christ, as me on this journey with Christ, I remember growing up, I always wanted to to do something, to chase a dream, to chase a goal. I remember growing up, that's what I've seen. I've seen, you know, things that I was exposed to early age. And even growing up, I always was into playing football and um, getting into the football team because I seen the guys on TV. I seen the guys that played in the NFL and I'm like, I want to do that one day. I want to become an NFL player. I want to, I want to do that one day. You know, I had dreams. I had, that's what I've seen growing up. But I was lost. I was lost. I was going to a, a, a the wrong direction with my life. I was going to the wrong direct, direction. I was going to the wrong direction. Everything that I've always chased after didn't work for me. Didn't work for me. So, as that as the Lord have took me as his son, as the Lord have took me in as his own, now I see. I see what I am called to do. I see what's the purpose that's over my life, the purpose, what God have created me to do. I see it. I see it. So the title, you know, as I put the title of the message, do you see Do you see? And I want to encourage. I want to encourage this son. Do you see? I know growing up, you probably wanted to do other things. You probably didn't see what you're seeing now. So, as my walk with Christ, the Lord showed me many things. Showed me many things. Showed me many things. He has shown me many things. And there was times, and I asked the Lord, I know you showing me this. You showing me this. This is what you showing me. You were showing me this. But do you remember what happened to me when I was in school when kids used to laugh at me? When the kids used to make fun of me because I'm always was a quiet child. I always was quiet in the school. I was always quiet in class. Do you remember? And I'm questioning the Lord. And the Lord's showing me this, this, these things. The Lord's showing me, no, I have something for you. I have a purpose. I have a calling in your life. I know that you don't see it now. I know that you don't see it now. But I want you to trust me. I want you to have faith. I want you to believe what I'm saying. And what I put in your life to do, do it. Don't question me. Do it. Do it. So as the Lord showed me those things, as the Lord showed me, there was there was some part of me was afraid. Part of me was afraid. It's like, Lord, like you showing me this. You showing me this. And this is what you're, you're asking from me to do. I need you, Lord. I need you to to help me. Help me. Help me to fulfill. Help me to do what you're showing me. Help me. So I made that decision to say, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I I see what you're showing me. I see what you're showing, showing me. So I I see the purpose. I see why I'm here. I see what uh, you called me from the world that I was from, from the world 
You call me from the world. Now you have something great for me. You have something that before beginning of my walk, I didn't see myself doing certain things because of fear of failure, because of fear and the things that happened in the past, because of fear of, you know, just not completing what I need to be, what I what I see in front of me, I allow, I, I, there was fear, but I did not allow those fear to get in front of me. I did not allow those fear to stop me and what God is um, calling me to do. So, and as I was sitting here, God, I see, I see it. I see it. I see it. And I make a deci- I made a decision to follow you and to trust you. If I had to lose, if I had to, if people don't want to be around me anymore because I made a change. I remember there was an individual that told me, John, what happened to you? You just did, you just turned your life around. What happened? People, some people was upset. Your people didn't 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 like they didn't understand. They didn't get it. They didn't get it what happened to me. That like how God just changed my life around. How God just changed me. And now he put me in the right path. He put me in his kingdom. So they didn't get that. Because they didn't see what I've seen. They didn't see what I was seeing. Because they were still out there in the world. I see, I see when the Lord showed me that he had greater things. I'm like, Lord, I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. If you have to, if I have to lose friends, family, I trust in you. If I have to get persecuted, I trust in you because I see what's in front of me. I see what's ahead of me and I'm not going to allow nothing to stop me. Nothing. So as a son, I encourage you to see what's in front of you. See what's in in front of you, what God has for you. Because I know that God has shown you some things in your life. That he wants you to complete. That he wants you to do. He have works. He had work. He got work for you. He got work for you. So you cannot allow anything to separate you from the love of God. You cannot allow anything to strip away what God has given you. And that's his kingdom. That's his joy. That's his love. That's all, all that God have. He gave it to, he, he gave it to you. So do you see what's in front of you? Do you see what's in front of you? Because it's going to be. Because when you see what's in front of you, when you know who you are in Christ, when you know what you are called to do, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. So on my journey, I, I, I face things. There's obstacles that I have to face. There was mountains that I have to face. There was giants that I have to face. There was things in my life that I have to face, but I had to overcome. And the way I overcome is through Christ Jesus. The way I fight, it was through Christ Jesus. As I made a decision, Lord, I obey. I obey what you're showing me. I, I obey what you're saying in your word. I obey. Because I want what you're showing me. The life that I had before is nothing compared to what you have for me now. What you're showing me now, I want this. So as a, as a son, when we see the purpose, when we see the call of God in your life, when you see it, nothing can stop you. You're not easily offended. All you want to do is love the people around you. Because you know and you understand the love of Christ 
and how the Lord, what the Lord has said in His Word, and loving your brothers, loving your sisters, and loving His His Word, as we love His Word, as we obey His Word, can nothing offend us? Can nothing, nothing stop us? Can nothing stop us? So do you see what's in front of you? Do you see? Don't allow discouragement to stop you. Don't allow fear to stop you. Don't allow your past to stop you. Do what God is calling you to do. If you didn't fulfill this goal when you was out in the world, you wanted to be the success, successful basketball player. You wanted to be the successful businessman. You wanted to be this doctor. And things like that. God has something greater for you. God has something greater for you. What God has for, for you, no man can take that from you. But you have to see what's in front of you. When you are focused and what's in front of you, that there's there's nothing in this world can take that from you. Because what God has, his work is greater than the work that's out there. Because God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to do great things. So, but you got to see what's in front of you. So, as I was um, reading in Genesis chapter 39, and there's a passage, that passage here speaking about Joseph and how his brothers envy him, had jealous, he was, they were jealous of him. They hated him because of what God was showing him in his dream. So there was, there was questioning Joseph like, so you're saying that I'm a bow before you? You're saying that I'm a kneel before you? So they were jealous. They were jealous. They was they had any they had hatred towards his thing, their, their brother. So what happened? They, they sold their brother to the, I believe to the, the, the Egypt, Egyptians. They sold their brother to slavery. But as you see, Joseph knew what the Lord was showing him. Joseph knew the purpose. Joseph knew his call. Joseph knew what was in front of him, but he did, he did not allow those things to stop him. He knew. He knew. He seen it. He seen it. He didn't allow what his brother, yes, he probably was hurt. He probably was offended. Yes, he probably was cut from that, but he made a decision, no, I still have to stay focused. No, I still have to carry the personality of Christ. I still have to be like Christ. I still have to do what God is calling me. I still have to obey God. I still have to follow God. I cannot allow those, what my brother did to stop me. So I want to read in chapter 39, Genesis 39. Genesis chapter 39. And we can start from here. And say in verse 1, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt in Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, in a in a Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought brought him down there. In verse two, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. It says here, Joseph was a prosperous man. Everything he did, he prospered. Because he knew, he knew his purpose. He seen what was in front of him. He seen it. He seen it. So he knew his, his purpose. He knew, no, God is calling me. God is calling me to great things. Yeah, I may not see it yet, but I have to stay focused. And I have, I have to continue doing what God is, God is calling me to do. So let's continue reading. In verse 2, it says, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his verse three. And his master saw the Lord 
was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hands. You see that? Say, the, the, the master, he knew that the Lord was with Joseph. As sons of God, when we make a decision to please God and obey God and do what God is calling to us to do, God will prosper us. And he will put us before great kings. He will be put, put us before great men. And they will see the hands of God in our life. And they're going to say, man, there's something about you. There's something about you. I need to hire you. I need to hire you. I know you, you, you probably don't, you don't have a, you don't have a, um, a, a, a bachelor degree. You don't have a master degree. You don't have a, 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 a probably a GD or diploma. But I need to hire you. And I know this job is requiring this stuff. It's required. It's looking for a master degree. It's looking for a, 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 a bachelor. It's looking for those things. But I, 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 but I don't, I don't look at that. I look what I see in you because God's hands is with you. And everything that you touch, everything that you do, it, it's a, it's, it's a blessing. You bring blessing. You could be, you could bring. I need, I need what God is doing in you, in my company. There's testimony, brothers, brother, brothers, I know that got jobs. Jobs that they don't have the requirements or the degree to, to have this job, but God placed them there and they're doing well because God hears us with them. So let's continue reading. In verse 4, it says, And Joseph found grace in the sight. In his sight, in his master's sight. And he served him. And he made him, him overseas over his house. He made Joseph oversee over his house. He found favor in God's sight. The Lord loved Joseph as he loved his sons. As his, he, he loved his sons. But we, we must obey. We must follow what God is saying. We must obey Him. Because God wants to do great things in your life. God wants to prosper you. God wants, to do, God wants you to have favor with men and stand before kings and give you jobs that you waste all your life trying to come, trying to, to, to get, to run, to chase after. But God giving you that job that you always wanted. But, but because you made a decision to follow him with your whole heart, mind, and soul. You made a decision to trust him. You made a decision to obey his command, obey his word. Now God placed you here. Now this manager of this company, it may be an a, a eyeglass company eyeglass company or, or doctor office. Now he want to oversee, make you oversee, see, or, uh, make you, uh, uh, put you over the company. Put you over the company. You, you oversee, see, see, like it, say, it says in verse four, he overseer over his house. So he put him over the company. God put him over the company. So God can do that for you. And you, he will place you in positions. He will place you in jobs and, and give you great positions, give you great things because you made a decision to focus. But because your focus wasn't the things. Your focus wasn't the job. Your focus wasn't the job. That was a, that was a um, Joseph focus. That wasn't a focus at all. Joseph was focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph was focused on the kingdom. So God had promoted him. God had blessed him. So in verse 5. And it came to pass. From the time that he had made him overseer. In his house. And over all that he had. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. For Joseph's sake. Wow. That's a powerful right there. When you step your feet. Where you put your foot at, where, wherever you go, you can bring blessings. 
It can be at this company. Like I say, this doctor office or glass, this uh, um, eyeglass company. You can bring blessings to this company because yo, you there, you are there because you are there. There's many blessings. You are there that be the companies doing this. They 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 they're doing great. They're moving forward because of your presence, because of you. So let's continue. Let's say it here. And it came to pass, verse 5, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. For Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Wow, that is powerful, man. In verse 6, it says here, And he left all that he had in Joseph's, Joseph's head. Joseph had favor with this man. He had favor with Pharaoh. He had favor with this man. That he was, that Pharaoh, that his master's house was, was willing to trust Joseph with his possessions. Trust Joseph with the things that he had. Because the Lord was with him. And he knew, in verse 6, I'm going to read it from the beginning. And he left that, and he left all that he had in Joseph's head. Joseph's head. And he knew, not out, he had. Save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. In verse 7, and it came to pass after this things that his master wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Now here comes the enemy. Here comes the enemy that's, that's trying to strip the kingdom from you. Here comes the enemy that's trying to stop you. Here comes lust. Here comes pride. Here, here comes discouragement. Here comes fear. That's trying to discourage you. That's trying to stop you. So we can allow, allow those things to come between what God has for us. We cannot allow those things to come to take what God had for us. So, so in verse 7, it say, And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. Sleep with me. So in verse 8, But he refused. Why? Because Joseph, he see. He see his purpose. He know his purpose. Do you see? Do you see what's in front of you? Do you see what's a, what what God had for you in front of you? So when you know what's in front of you, in front of you, nothing can stop you. He refused and said to, unto his master's wife, "Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed." All that he hath to my hand. In verse nine, there there is none greater in the in this house than I. Neither neither have he kept back anything from me, but you. So, as we see there, his master, you know, his master's wife was trying to have Joseph to lay with her. He wanted to take what Joseph had, the power, the authority. She wanted to take, that's what I mean. She wanted to take what Joseph had. But Joseph didn't want that. Joseph, he, he, he he knew better. He knew better. He feared God. No, I'm not going to do this because I know what's ahead of me. I know what's in front of me. I'm not going to do this. So she forced herself. She forced herself to keep it short. She forced herself. And Joseph ran. Joseph ran to, like, I think, I believe her his garment. She, her, his, she torn his garment off him. His clothes off him. So Joseph ran 
because he didn't want nothing to do with this because he knew what God is what God has said um, what God has shown him what God has shown him he knew that if I stay focused if I do what God is telling me to do that nothing can stop me nothing can stop me not even her so Joseph made the decision to focus Joseph made the decision to focus and what happened now 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 Joseph is getting tested his faith is getting tested his faith getting tested now so Joseph was put in prison but when Joseph was put in prison he had favor with the guards he had favor with the with the guards in prison. I like that's that like that's wild. that's amazing. Like wow. This man had favor with the guards in prison. Everywhere this man went, the favor of God followed him. Because he stayed focused on the mission. He stayed focused on what the, the purpose, what the, the, the responsibility for him that God has set over his life. He stayed focused. Stay focused. So as he was in the prison, now he was was put in position to help the cupbearer and the, and the butler. He was there to help them. I mean, the baker and the cupbearer. So he was there to help them. Because they had dreams, and the, and Joseph was able to help them to, to to explain what their dreams mean. So, because Joseph um, was faithful and was, he knew his purpose. He knew what it was called to do. And the Lord do speak. The Lord speak through him, and he was able to explain dreams. In a powerful way, he had a great he had a great anointing in his life to explain to 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 see people's dreams and break it down. So, as the cupbearer left the prison, Pharaoh King Pharaoh had a dream. He had a dream that no one in the land couldn't help him to explain what he was seeing. So, but, but there was one person there that he was he he remembered this guy named Joseph and told King Pharaoh, "I know a person. I know a person that, that can that can show you that that can explain." Your dream. I know this person. I know this person. I'm gonna go get him now. So Pharaoh, King Pharaoh, brought guys to go get him. So Joseph was brought to King Pharaoh as he was standing before King the King King Pharaoh. Now Joseph was positioned to to do what God was calling him to do. It was it, it was the work. He was, you know, he was called to work now. Okay, I want you to use what I give you. I want you to I want I want you to use what I'm giving you. I want you to use it. So as the Lord as the Lord positioned for, for positions on Joseph, Joseph was able to to to, to explain Pharaoh's dream, to, to break it down, to make it clear for him. And Joseph seeing that, it's like, man, I did everyone, but you, you, wow. You know what? I'm gonna give you everything that I have. I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you in position. I'm gonna make you boss. I'm gonna make you over everything that I have. So you see, as we read in Genesis, as we read it through this passage. Joseph did not allow what happened to him when he was a kid, when his brother, what his brothers did to him. Joseph did not allow that. 
what Joseph didn't allow what his brother did to him to discourage him, to stop him. He didn't allow, he didn't, didn't allow that to, to stop him to go forward. Everything he did, he prospered because he knew what was in front of him. He knew what was ahead of him. He knew the call of God in his life. He knew, man, there's greater. God has shown me greater things. Yes, I had a dream. I had a dream that God was showing me that one day, my brothers, one day, they will bow before me. One day, people will come to me and bow before me, depend on me. One day. This is what the Lord was showing him. He's seen. He's seen it. He know it. And he, he, he hold he hold tight to that. Like, no, the Lord is showing me this. I'm not, allowed, I'm not going to allow nothing to stop me. I'm not going to allow nothing to stop me. Nothing at all to stop me. Because what the Lord is showing me, I know one day, one day, it's going to happen. It's not, it wasn't his... It wasn't as um as as you know Pharaoh promoted as the Lord promoted Joseph. Now he had his great position. He didn't really, he didn't ask for all that. He didn't ask for that. He didn't ask God to give me this. All he did was stay focused. All he did was be the great man that God was calling him to be. Be great in what you do. Be great in your master house. Be great. Be a good servant. Serve with love. Treat everyone around you with love. Treat everyone around you with, with respect. Treat everyone around you like you, you, you just you care for them. No, do everything that you do. Don't complain as a slave. Don't complain as a slave. Oh, yes, you may be in the field working hard, but Joseph didn't complain. Joseph didn't complain in what the what the, the, the responsibility, the, the work that he had to do, you know, because sometimes we as sons, we go, we may, we may put in position, in life, like, we may put in position and we're, we're facing so much in life. It's like, Lord, this is a lot. I'm going through so much. I'm going through a lot, but I need you to stay focused. I know you're going through this. I know you have this going on in your life. I know your family member, don't, your family's members is bashing you right now. They're treating you this way right now. I know your friends are treating you this way right now. I know you're getting persecuted. I know you're getting, you, 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 they, they're going to arrest you because you was, um, arrest you for the gospel. Because they told you not to preach the gospel, but you know, no, I, yeah, I need to preach this gospel. Because God commanded me to preach this gospel. So now you're arrested. Now you, you, now you, you make me discouraged. But as we read in the passage, Joseph did not allow what happened to him to discourage him. Everything he did, everything he did, he did well at it. He did well at it. Because he knew what was, he knew his purpose. He knew what was ahead of him. He knew, he see, he see it. He see it. He see the kingdom. He see the kingdom. So he chased after it. He chased after it. He didn't allow nothing to stop him. So we can't allow nothing to stop, stop us. Whoever is listening, I encourage you. Do great in what you do. Don't allow fear of failure to stop you. Because it's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's by the Spirit of God. As we depend on God, we could do great in what we do. Because God is the one that's going to prosper us. God is the one that's going to help us, strengthen us, give us the courage, give us the strength, the hope to keep going. God is the one. It's not us. God is the one. We have to set our eyes on him. We have to stay our trust in him. We have to stay our focus in him. So when we do that, Wherever, wherever we are placed in life, whatever happened to us, wherever, go, wherever we are placed in life, whatever may happen to us, nothing can break the sons of God when they know, they know what's in front of them. They know what they see. They're going to chase it with all their hearts, mind, heart, mind, and soul. Everything that they have, they're going to be passionate with it. Because they see 
they see the king, they see the kingdom in front of them. They know that one day I'm gonna live with the father forever. I'm gonna live with the father forever, and I'm not gonna allow nothing to stop me. As I stay focused on the mission, as I stay focused on the work, as I stay focused on what God is calling me to do and do well at it, I can't be afraid. I can't allow discouragement. I cannot allow the things of life to stop me. I cannot allow family. I cannot allow friends. I cannot allow nothing to stop me because I know what's in front of me. I know the plans and purpose of God in my life. I know it. So as sons, when we believe in that, I'm telling you, you're going to be great at it. You're going to be great for the king. You're going to be great in the kingdom. Because you made a decision to obey God and love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And trust in God. And do everything well and not complain about it. Not complain, oh Lord, I can't do it because I'm not capable. I don't have the knowledge to. I don't, I know, I know, I don't know much of the script, scriptures. I don't know. I, I can't speak well. Or I can I can't. That's this is you just complain. You just talking. No, God put his spirit in you. God put his spirit in you. God put his power in you. God put so much in you. When we in worship, as we in church and at my church, you know, worship be so great. Like there's there's so much power. There's so much glory. There's so much of the presence of God that God is pouring. So as we receiving all this, God is just not pouring. When we come in God's presence, every time we go come in God's presence, we don't leave empty-handed. We do not leave empty-handed. We do not leave with any, nothing in our hand, hands. We leave with something. God give us gifts. God give us great, great power. God give us more of his anointing. God give us more of his love. God give us more patience. God give us more joy. God give us more happiness. God give us more of his kingdom. He give it to you because he loves you. And I want, and as he give it to you, now he send you out. Son, go out. And what I give you, do well. Do well what you have. Do well what you have because you represent me. You represent me. Know who you are. You are a son of God. I've chosen you. I've called you. And I want you to do well. Don't be afraid of man faces. Do well what you do. Do well in what you do. And fear God. Fear me and do well what you do. And don't allow nothing to stop you. Don't allow nothing to stop you. Nothing to stop you. God is doing so much. So much. He's doing so much. And I want to be a part of this. God doing a mighty work. God doing, this, doing a great work and I want to be a part of this. Because this is my life. I don't got nothing else to go to. I don't have nothing else to go to. What else out there for me? What's out there for you? And I'm talking to the sons. What's out there for you? There's nothing out there to go to. All I need is God. All I need is him. And that's just all I want. Like the Lord completes me. He completes us. And, and, and we are called to do his work. We are called to do his work. We are called to do well in what he is calling us to do. Whatever you God calling you to do, do well at it. Do well at it. Do great at it. Because he loves you. He loves you. He's going to be with you. He's going he gonna to be with you. He's going to be with you when you're speaking, when you're preaching the gospel. He's going to be with you when you're exhorting. He's going to be with you when you're uh, um, um, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, doing great things in the kingdom. He's going to be with you. Thank you, God. Do you see? Do you see it? Do you see what's in front of you? 
you see. And I always picture myself. This morning, as I was in prayer, and I was singing the song to the Lord. I'm running in your field. I was singing the song to the Lord. I can't wait to run in your field. And when I see Jesus, I'm not going to walk to him. When I see Jesus, I'm not going to walk to him. I'm going to run with full force. I'm going to run with all my power. I'm going to run to him and embrace him when I see him. And, but I, as I'm waiting, as I'm waiting for that day to come, I'm going to run. I'm going to run so hard. I'm going to run to those gates, his gates, his door. Run. I'm going to run and I'm going to do what God is calling me to do. And I encourage you all to do the same. Run to him. And don't stop. Run to him. Run to the kingdom. Run to his arms. And don't stop. When, G when Peter denied Christ, he was discouraged. He was, I know he felt, he felt bad. When Peter denied Christ, and when he heard that the Lord had risen, the Lord had risen, he ran. He ran to see. Because he knew, no, my end, this is not the end of my journey. Yeah, I made this mistake. I made this mistake. But that doesn't define me. I have to make a decision to stay focused and see what's in front of me. See what's in front of me. Because I know I'm going to go to the Father. I'm going to run to the Father. And the Father going to forgive me. And that's, 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 that was Peter. He knew that his Father was going to forgive him. He knew that his Father was going to give him a chance. He knew that his Father was going to wash his sin and change his heart. He ran to him. Because he see, no, I see it. I see it. I see it. And I'm going to run to it. And I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. So God blessing to all the sons, to all the sons, the children of God, the sons and the daughters of God that are, that, that, that are faithful and doing God, doing what God is doing, uh, is telling them to do. And they're, and they're hungry and they're, they're, they're thirsty and they, they, they know what's in front of them. They know what God is showing them. So I encourage you to keep going. I, go, I, mean, I encourage you to run, 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 and don't stop. Run, run to him. Don't stop. When I mean run, run to him. Don't stop. Full speed, run to him. Don't stop. Do not stop. Run to him. God bless you.